I think it depends on how severe that dementia is. So if it's at the beginning, an early diagnosis, I think the best way of looking upon it is seeing that person as having a disability, an intellectual disability, which means their memory is going to be damaged. So how can I compensate for that? And obviously it means you don't rely on the memory, so you write things down because that will be very useful. It's so important to break it down into the small tasks, not just you need to make a cup of tea, is how do you make mm. the cup of tea? Because they are losing not only memory, but, but thinking. Routines, they will help you. Don't introduce change into your life, because then if it's change, it's new, and if it's new, it's got to be remembered. And that's where your problem lies. So, so predictability is essential. I always say, look, just walk around and do a safety check. Just, just see where the hazards are. What can you do about those hazards and where do you need help to manage those hazards? So I think it's very important that you, you alert the neighbours that there is risk. Maybe they can come and check. Maybe late at night they could, they could try the front door just to make sure that that is locked. But then I think you contact the services, you contact the gas, the electricity, because there are ways, means, whereby they can produce safety measures into the home. So I, I think you can maybe go further than you might have anticipated to keep someone in their own home and safe and you not worrying. It's what we call reality confrontation. A, a person with dementia doesn't believe anything, they know everything. And what they know is different to what we know but to them, it's what is life is really about. Say to yourself, well, he doesn't know. He's not doing this deliberately. And so instead of contradicting him, you have to start adapting, being flexible, faster on your feet, and just sort of identify with all these troubles, all these worries, and say, right, let's try and find the money. So move from the blame to a solution. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's where you, you just don't want to get locked into these arguments. It does, it does the family care and no good, mm -hmm. and it doesn't do the person with dementia any good at all. When a person is aggressive, the, the wise thing to do is, is to pull away. Don't crowd them, don't bombard them with questions or demand they calm down. Just pull away and reflect and think, I wonder why they've become aggressive. Is it the case I've asked them to do something they never would have wanted to do? Is it because they could be frightened? Or could they be frustrated by what's happened? Maybe they've been struggling trying to remember something and really they've just escalated and their bad temperness has now turned into aggression. There'll always be reasons. You've just got to be a bit of a detective to work out why they might be screaming, shouting, punching or swearing and then try to work out, then what might I do about it? And it's often the case that it's really ingrained in who this person is and nowadays their life isn't how they want it to be and that frustration spills over into aggression. But it is always wise just to pull back and just give yourself some time. That metaphorical counting from one to 10 and then try and work it through. The other aspect of the memory problem is that people lose their memories and they always lose the most recent years first, leaving the historical remote behind and as a result that's what they relive and so as a result they know they've got young children they know they've got jobs to go to or maybe deceased partners and parents are resurrected and what we need to do is to go into that world and understand what they're feeling because if you know you've got small children and you can't find them you can imagine what the distress must be so maybe you'll say well come let's go and see if we can find them or you might take advantage of their failing memory and, and just talk about their children and eventually they'll start to forget they were trying to find them and maybe just want to talk about their children. Maybe at that point you can say, let's have got a photograph. And, and this is what we do in Booper's care homes. It's all part of the specialist training to know that you don't get intimidated or worried when someone starts talking about their past as if it's happening now. That's just their world that they're living in and that's the world you join them in. I think what you need to do is first remove all distractions, make sure the television or radio is turned down or turned off. And then the conversation should be focused, so it's straightforward. You have eye contact, gentle tone of voice, pleasant expression, so it's, it's a pleasant experience. And then speak in a very straightforward, simple, straightforward way. And whatever reply you get from the person with dementia, whatever words you can make sense, sometimes it's a good idea just to repeat back to them the words that you understood, because that might just prompt them to say a bit more. Because the problem in dementia is often 
when they have to think about what they're going to say, it all goes into a jumble. So if you repeat back a few words, then they'll be able to get a few more words out, and then you repeat those, and they get a few more words out, and then maybe you start to get a real idea of what they're trying to tell you. And read their body language as well. So you might say, oh, Dad, you're looking a bit angry, or Dad, you're looking a bit unhappy, just by how they're presenting. Might, again, progress that conversation. So it is difficult, but I think with patience, you can get far further into a conversation than you might have imagined. Every family is different and sometimes you can't rely on others. Maybe relationships aren't good or maybe they just live a long way and away. And I think then you do rely on the professionals. Social services, they do provide or can provide access to day centres, respite units. So. I'm not saying that you put yourself first, but you've got to give yourself equal priority and care for yourself as a carer.